Hey guys, it's Javi. So today we're going to be doing a year in review for the housing market in the Goodyear, Arizona area. And we're also going to be evaluating what could potentially happen in 2024 for anybody who's potentially either interested in buying in the area or maybe you're just curious to see what happens in the area. Because I actually live near Goodyear and it's near and dear to me because it's an area where I grew up and uh, I care a lot about it. And I care a lot for the people buying there and it's something that's close to me home. So let's get into it. So first and foremost, here is a quick break breakdown of what happened with the values in uh, Goodyear, Arizona. So here we have our monthly average sales price. And really to get a good idea of what happened in 2023, we need to also get a good idea of what happened in 2022. And in 2022, we can see that was our absolute peak of values. May 2022 was the absolute peak where our average sales price was at $543,000. And if we look at the median sales price, we also see a very similar trend, except the median sales price was around 527,000. And from there it went down. For those that don't know the difference between the median and the sales price, essentially the average is calculated by adding up all the individual values. You add them all up and then you divide it by the amount of houses that was. And the median is calculated by taking the middle value. So you can choose which is your best. I personally prefer to look at median value when it comes to analyzing what price range you want to be around. Now, typically average is a better number to look at. The only problem with that is sometimes you'll get a really expensive or really cheap house that sells that just skews the data. So it's always kind of good to see the median value as well for that reason. So anyways, we can see here there's definitely the similar trend in both. And we saw that there was absolute max in 2022 and there was that drop. Now, before we get to 2023, let's analyze what really created this huge boost in that time so if we look at the active inventory and the under contract uh, at least listings under contract of that year and it's important to see this because i prefer to look at the under contract number as that gets a good indication of that current interest of that month as opposed to sold numbers being the interest of the previous month well anywho we can see here that our active inventory was pretty low at the beginning of 2022. And if you look past 2020 and 2021, we can see there is a very similar trend here. 2020 was that drop and it stayed relatively low during that huge increase of property values that happened during the pandemic boom. So anywho, their inventory was low. And if we look at our under contract numbers, they were pretty high, right? So as, like I said before, if we look at 2021, the huge ex extreme boost of values, Pending numbers were high, under contract numbers were high, I apologize. So we can see that that huge demand was there and that supply wasn't there yet. But all of a sudden, we started seeing that supply start ticking up and up and up. And it all went to a boiling point where actually here, May was the top of the market, right? So here was the beginning of that increase of inventory. And we can see here was that beginning of that decrease of inventory. And this created that perfect storm of prices beginning to go down. And if you look at the mortgage rates, you can see a very similar pattern here. March and before 2022, rates were absolutely amazing. 2.99, 3% around there. But as soon as March hit, right, and that 3.75, 3.5, within like period of what, three or four months, went all the way to 5%. And then that same year it kept going up all the way to 7%. So this huge increase from three to 7% is almost parallel to the prices dropping, to the inventory increasing, and to the demand dropping, right? So this created that effect of prices going down. So now when we're analyzing 2023, we simply look at what the active inventory was versus the under contract numbers so we can get a good idea. Basically logic told us that what we should have seen is with interest rates being as high as 7% almost the entire year, we can see here, starting the beginning of the year, we were like floating around the low sixes, but we slowly, steadily went up. We should have seen a just a complete crash, right? We should have seen a huge demand going down. But what we saw instead, starting, let me remove 2022 now, so we can kind of get a good idea of just uh, 2023. What we saw was a drop down period in the beginning of the year, an increase of value, another drop down period during the summer, and for some reason over the last few months, it increased back up. Now, if we take the median line, we should see 
about the same thing here, except it, it kind of indicates more a continual growth. So we can see our median sales price continually actually increasing from the beginning of the year, going from $459,000 and to today, November 2023, $485,000. So our median sales price increased by about $25,000. Our average sales price started at the beginning of the year at $498,000 and it ended currently in November at $506,000. So it went up $6,000. So despite interest rates continuing to rise, we actually saw an increase to our mean and our average sales price. Keep in mind when I'm looking at this data, I am looking only at single family residences in Goodyear and I'm only focusing under 3000 square feet houses. I'm not adding the, the really big giant houses. If you are watching this and you're like, hey man, I, I'm looking in this specific neighborhood, or I'm looking for this specific type of house and you want to market data research for that, it doesn't matter if it's Goodyear anywhere in the valley, I can do that for you. So just you know, reach out to me any of these things below and just reach out and we can set up an appointment where I can analyze the market for you. I do that for all my clients and I would love the opportunity to earn your business. Anyways, so we can see there's actually an increase, right? And now I don't know if this is going to continue, but it's looking not too shabby. Now, if we look at the inventory, we can see, let's remove 2022 now that we're focusing. Oh, actually, let's leave it up there. We can see that the inventory increased in 2022. And what happened, what ha happened was inventory started dropping again. If the inventory would have stayed high, I think we would have seen some kind of de huge decrease, right? But no, inventory dropped. So sellers decided to say, you know what? We're going to hold back for just a little bit. We're not going to sell. And what we saw, and so the brown is 2023, the beginning of the year, demand went up and it kind of stayed high and it eventually started kind of dropping. So if demand would have been stayed flat and would have been just low, let's say the inventory dipped, but demand also dipped or stayed flat, we would have seen some kind of like drop or something. But no, this boost of demand created this effect where the value stayed strong or at least stayed like fix and this is just Goodyear every city is completely different now personally I think what happened is at the beginning of the year right interest rates are already starting to go up they were like at six six to seven percent right at the beginning of the year I uh, apologize for the coughing I just got over COVID and hit the whole family really hard and luckily the little baby's okay but it was, I was still having that leftover cough um, so inventory was going up, but for some reason, demand started going up. Now, me personally, I think what happened is everybody started getting like, oh my God, the market's crashing. Everybody's so in tuned with the market now, whenever they start seeing price, which at that point, if you really want to analyze it, let me go back here, um, to our monthly median sales price and let's add 2022. By then, what was being reported was this huge loss of value. So come the beginning of the new year, people were excited and they were saying, great, it's my time to buy again. Yes, interest rates are high, but the prices are dropping and I need to get in on this, right? So it created this effect where people were buying and that demand is what propped up the Goodyear market at least to have value stay pretty strong. This is interesting. I understand that, you know, there's a lot of things in the media going on about how prices are dropping and I'm certainly seeing that in certain areas. But as of right now, the numbers show that the numbers stayed pretty okay. Is this going to continue? That's the question. And um, let's kind of analyze a few things here. The train of thought that most realtors and lenders have right now is, well, yeah, things are slow right now, but what will happen is when rates drop next year, a huge wave of home buyers are going to hit the market and demand is going to boost up again, right? Because right now, what we're seeing is that inventory in, in 2023 is starting to go up. It's starting to be at the levels where it was when the market was starting to decrease a lot in value. And we can see our pending numbers, our under contract numbers are already well, I mean, they're not as low as 2022, but they're pretty low as well. But we're seeing it spike up a bit, right? So there's that dang demand boost again that propped up the beginning of the year. And it's kind of kind of starting to poke up there again a little bit. So like I was saying, people are saying that, well, once the interest rates are going to lower, it's going to magically save the market and, and things are going to be great. But the reality is, I don't think that's the case. Right now, if you're, let's say, buying a house in the Goodyear area, and let's say you can get something for, I don't know, 350 to 400,000 for the starter home range, okay? Um, and maybe you go for the new build for the low 400 or something, I don't know. Let's just say 350 for the for a resale. Well, right now, a $350,000 house at 7% is not that different of a payment. If, actually, if we just run the numbers really quick, if we're just calculating, let's not do the taxes or the insurance right now, because that's something that definitely gets added uh, later. But let's just kind of just look at this right here. So if we're looking at just the principal and the interest, okay, 
buying a $350,000 house with 5% down at a 7% interest, just your principal and interest is $2,200, right? We add taxes and insurance and all that, that could easily go up. I don't know, they're not that high in Goodyear. Homeowner's insurance, let's say you can get something like $80. PMI, let's say you have good in credit. So let's say you're paying about $2,600. HOA is probably another 50, 26, okay? Now, according to my sources here, uh, here this article on Business Insider, we can see that Mortgage Bankers Association are predicting uh, rates to drop to by quarter four to 6.1. Fannie Mae is only predicting 6.7 by the end of the year. And National Association of Realtors are being very uh, optimistic and thinking they're going to lower us beginning of quarter one to 6.1. I think that's uh, really optimistic, but let's just kind of, let's just go with that just for now. So, if that 2642 payment, that rate drops to 6%, that only goes down to 2423. It goes from, hey, this is really unaffordable to, hey, this is unaffordable. But still, it doesn't quite make sense. So I don't see this huge demand of home buyers coming to hit the market again when uh, prices drop. But what I do see happening is what's currently happening already because the fact of the matter is our inventories are going up they're going up at a pretty alarming rate our inventory had went up and it's kind of flattening out our demand is i guess we're only going to find out what happens if the beginning of the year hits and there is not as many buyers as we thought thought there were what's going to happen is home buyers that are currently on the market are going to just have their way with homeowners they're going to be making very aggressive offers way below list price and i think we're going to see more price reductions at the beginning of the quarter now if the market were to naturally play out the price reductions would continue until like quarter two or quarter three and then eventually it'll get to the point where houses were kind of cheap again but i don't see that happening because not because of rates going down or anything like that what people are talking about I think there's so many people in tune with what's going on. Everyone has freaking Zillow on their phone and people are watching all these these doomers on YouTube and on social media about how the market's going to crash that whenever they start getting the sense that prices are dropping again or the media starts reporting that prices are dropping, people are going to go back into the market. And it's going to do just like what happened, like I showed you guys in well, earlier this year, that under contract boom here that happened that basically propped up the values here, right? They... they we, well, let me let me remove 2022 again like if we look at the me the median line is like a scale up that propped up the values here was because of that under contract boom that happens from people going back because they start feeling optimistic about the market there's too many people checked in in the media checked in with the news for that to happen so me personally here's what i think okay i've, I've been preaching this to anyone who's listening if you're thinking about buying a house the resale market is tough right now Okay, because rates are so high, it's making houses so unaffordable. So if you're even considering a resale, like in Goodyear specifically, you could get something in the low 300s as of right now. Um, but let me just kind of show you what my approach would be. Okay, so let's say you are doing a quick search, do a residential, we'll do like an active. So you can find something in the mid 300s right now. Okay, but a lot of these houses in the mid 300s, if we can see here on the right hand side, like I already have 30 days, 160 days, 116 days, you know, stuff like that. So if you're in the resale game, it's tough. You're probably going to be taking some losses in the first two quarters of next year. And it might even go even further, right? So if you're buying a resale, you should expect to lose value because of that. Then why would you buy a resale? Well, the reason is, is because A, you need to like pad yourself as much as possible. This means potentially buying it as aggressively under list price as possible and getting as much seller's concessions as possible. Not just getting a chunk of money to buy down your rate. I know people are tempted to do that. I honestly think your priority should be to get it as cheap as possible. Like if you get a $360,000 list price house for 330, 340, not only are you helping bring values down for everybody else, but now if the prices do kind of start dropping to 350, 345, then you've already kind of padded yourself there. Obviously, this goes without saying, make sure that your monthly payment is within your budget, 20 to 30% of your net income, not just what your lender tells you you qualify for. So that goes without saying. But right now, if you just expand a little more further out, there's actually a lot of new builds. Uh, there's a lot of new builds where in, uh, they just built so many houses in the last few months that are started building them and they haven't found the buyers for them. So now builders are getting very desperate and they don't know what to do with them. So they're giving these houses out and they're doing like a rate buy down of 5% or rate buy down of five and a half where they're doing. Uh, and, and on top of that, they're giving you 10 to 20 K concessions and stuff like that. So these builders, 
if you can find yourself an inventory home, it's the way to go if you're really considering buying. But for everybody else, like use this time to build your savings, to work on your credit, and and you know really you want to make sure there's three things you need to keep in mind. Okay, one, you're building your like your budget set up. You have a plan in place. You know where your money's going in. You're going out. You have an idea of what what you can afford, which is usually twenty to thirty percent of your net income. The second thing is you have your emergency fund saved up. You have your your hopefully a retirement fund already begun. And then on top of that, your housing funds are separate, right? So you have three different funds, right? You just don't have Javier have 20,000. That's what I'm going to buy with. You have separate funds. And the third thing is you have a good understanding of your local market knowledge. Now, of course, I gave you a lot of knowledge in this video, but like I take it a step further and really understand your specific neighborhood. Now it requires you to have a good realtor that's not going to try to sell you. So I'm available if you want to chat with me below, but hopefully you have someone that's very data oriented like myself um, that can walk you through that. But essentially if those three things are set, then if you don't have them set, I should say, then work on that while things kind of adjust. If you are persistent and you're saying I need to buy now because of X reason. I think inventory houses are the way to go, at least for the first one quarter or two of the, the 2024. Um, if you're insistent on going to resells, you have to have a very aggressive plan to make sure that you're not buying list price over list price. And yes, you might find the house of your dreams. And you're going to be overjoyed and say, oh my gosh, this is where my kids are going to grow up. No, the goal is to save as much money off the list price get as much concession so we can do something creative with your financing. And this whole idea of, of date the rate and buy the house, I don't know. I don't know if rates are gonna drop. I don't know if prices are gonna drop. Do the best decision for yourself in the future. And this is the market. So if you guys like this video, let me know. I can do more like market analysis of this of individual cities. If you have another city in mind, please let me know. And of course you can text or call me, email me. All my information is below in the description. I'm available to chat any time of the day. So, uh, well maybe not after like 8 p.m. That would be a little weird. Thank you guys. Talk to you soon.